Welcome back. We're now going to go to Kelsey Epperson with the women's soccer team. After going just under 500 last season, the Baker women's soccer team is about to undergo several drastic changes. Since last season, the team has been training to prepare themselves for the fall. After Thanksgiving, we started weight training, and then as the weather got nicer, we started running outside, and then we moved to North Park and started playing small games. So. Head coach Nate Hauser has recruited over 15 players from all around the U.S. and even one from Mali, Africa. With this added depth, the soccer program will have its first full JV team ever. So this offseason we've only had about eight players that practices usually because some girls are at track and then lots of girls aren't coming back. So it's exciting that next year we'll have enough players to have a JV team and scrimmage a full team instead of just 4v4. And it's been kind of hard sometimes to um, prepare for games just because we're playing 4v4 instead of full games. So it's real exciting that next year we'll be able to do that. And we're excited that we have all different kinds of players coming. After hard work, the team hopes it will pay off when they take a trip to Europe this coming August. This is the first time the women's team has traveled out of the country for competition. So we're going to Holland, Austria, and Germany, Munich, Germany, and we'll be there for about 10 days in the beginning of August. And we're really excited because we're going to be playing some games and touring, so it should be really fun for the soccer girls to go get to see a different, uh, different way of life. So. The team has already started fundraising for the trip and will continue throughout the summer. To help fundraise for this trip, we're doing lots of things. Like right now, we're at the high school Baldwin track meet, and we're here to sell concessions and yummy foods so we can go to Europe and have a cheaper flight. And we're also, over the summer, we're having some soccer camps for younger teams, and um, we're hopefully going to have a tournament for people to come to and uh, have an entry fee. And then we're also uh, collecting soccer balls and donating them for the inner city, which we're going to uh, gain $20 for each ball if we can uh, get enough. So hopefully that works out good so our uh, trip can be a little bit cheaper for everyone. Thanks, Kelsey from KNBU. If you'd like to donate money towards the team's trip, contact head coach Nate Hauser. This has been Kelsey Epperson for KNBU. Thanks, Kelsey. We're now going to Chris Campbell with Teresa Yetmer, Assistant Athletic Director. Thanks, Brittany. I'm here today to talk about Assistant Athletic Director Teresa Yetmer. I sat down in her office to find out exactly what she does. I have probably two main responsibilities. One is budget management for the athletic department, and the other is event management for all of our home events. So. With budget, we have 19 sports, and so that probably entails about 40 budgets when you look at operational, restricted, and recruiting. And then with all of our events, we host fall, winter, and spring sports, so we're, we're pretty busy. And with the event management, I take care of the officials, making sure they get paid, someone meets them and greets them. With football, we have to shuttle back and forth because of the lack of space out there for a locker room for the officials. And hire game workers, make sure that they know what they're doing, and supervise them deal with gate, um, help with crowd control, kind of make sure I coordinate with all the other areas on campus, like maintenance and security, that they know what's going on and they help set up the facility. And then um, a lot of times I'll also deal with um, just kind of the little things, like coordinating half times with homecoming is always a big one, our Hall of Fame. And I work a lot with scheduling, um, just making sure that we're not double booked at Liston or double booked at North Park. and help out with awards, make sure the kids are recognized and get letter jackets and are nominated for, you know, the we have Region 5, just kind of sending out reminders to our coaches and probably anything else that Dan, my boss and our athletic director, decides. Um, Dan is a great boss, he's a lot of fun and he's a good mentor. And pretty much we work hand in hand and anything that happens at an event he's aware of or budget he's aware of and so you know we'll have conversations about that and um, it's a good working relationship and a, and a good friendship and uh, basically where I would consider as a team. Yeah we've dealt with some challenges with the spring sports for sure mother nature kind of is running the show right now so we've had to rearrange games and usually there's a deadline for every sport on when we have to get the games in because of conference tournaments and then regional qualification and especially national qualification the national office requires certain dates and so 
we basically had to communicate with other schools and their ADs and coaches and officiating crews pretty consistently the last couple of weeks and just saying, you know, when can we fit it in? Are you coming this way? And um, everyone's been really supportive and maintenance and security. We kept them in the loop and let them know what's going on. And all of our fans, especially because it's been difficult for them trying to get on the website, trying to get it online to all the students and just to let them know, here's what's going on. We want you to come. But until Mother Nature decides to let us play with the, the field conditions, we're, we're just rolling with the punches, basically. Baseball, um, just by the nature of what you are not really able to do a halftime show or anything like that, so it's a little lower maintenance, but basically um, I meet with the officials an hour before game time and the week prior I'll have their checks cut and so then that way when I meet them and greet them and ask them if they have any questions, letting them know that I'm there to supervise and make sure that they're paid and you know that they're welcomed and greeted appropriately. And so then once that is finished, um, prior to the game I've actually been in contact with RSID and with our radio crew to know if they're broadcasting and need the press box and a line and, and to you know make sure we have stats covered and, and Phil is really great about organizing his guys in the press box to have someone to do the PA and to do music and to do all those little details and for the game. And so um, once the game starts, it's basically just troubleshooting. You know, if, if the weather, we had one game, Culver Stockton in particular, where it came out of nowhere, and so I'm, you know, running back to my office looking at weather.com, making sure that our trainers are checking lightning, and um, we I had to meet with the officials and call that second game because it was too hazardous. So um, basically, once the game starts, it, it tends to run itself, you know, just monitoring the crowd and making sure that everyone has what they need. This has been Chris Campbell for KNBU. Thanks for tuning into the show. I hope to see you guys next week. This has been Brittany Bissonette from KNBU.